Good morning, everyone. Sorry we're sideways. I'm just gonna turn you. I don't know what's happened. <laughs> there we go. Oh, gracious me. What a palaver I've had this morning. My sewing machine um, has currently gone to sewing machine heaven. I.e. that means I'm gonna take it to my mum so she can fix it. But I've got my other sewing machine. Do you wanna see it? This is one of my other sewing machines. It's a bit dusty because I haven't used it for a while but it's actually a really good industrial machine. This is my House of Alistair leopard print machine. Um, gotta love it. Morning, Trisha. Um, right, lots of you joining, which is fantastic. This morning, we're going to be making a fabric shopping basket. I've got a couple of um, disclaimers before we start. Number one, if you can hear any odd sounds my neighbor's cleaning his car we can't hold it against him it's a beautiful day i'd be cleaning my car too um but that's the uh, jet wash that you can hear he's very he's, he loves his car and he my car got so filthy once he cleaned it for me because it was real bad so we let him off we let him off um yes yeah, so we're making a fabric basket washable Thank you, Joanne. Yeah, it's a bit fancy, isn't it? So if anyone's just joined, this is my sewing machine. Le it's a leopard print one today. Um, I don't know what's happening with my other one. Something the bobbin wasn't catching properly. Morning, Sylv. Um, but this one, it's a Taylor Eastman um, from House of Alistair, and it's real good industrial. It proper chews through fabric like nobody's business. So I thought that would be a great uh, one to bring in. And that's why we're a bit late because I was uh, replacing the needle and trying to remember how to thread it up. Um, you like the headbands I wear? Thank you. They're my daughter's. My mum got them for her for Christmas and um, I just like to borrow them. Plus I washed my hair this morning so it's a bit damp. So I thought I'll put the headband on. Right, so let's get cracking. If you don't mind me, I'll just have a sip of my drink. Hmm. I have to tell you something funny that happened this morning. So, as in the studio, and I normally have the big doors closed at the front, so then I can put all the artificial lights on, make it a bit brighter. But this morning it was so beautiful, I thought I'll have those big doors open. And uh, it's at the front of the house. So I had the big doors open and um, I forgot I had a delivery coming. And we've got a lovely, lovely man that delivers all the Hermes parcels and ordered the kids some joggers and stuff to keep them comfy. And, um, he pulled on the drive, so I went out to meet him. He went, what the heck are you doing in there? Because <laughs> it must look a bit odd from the outside, these lights and this big table and this background and all that. And I went, oh, um, online sewing. <laughs> he went, oh, all right. <laughs> God knows what he thought I was up to. Um, morning, Annie. Oh, you're very welcome. Well, it, it keeps me occupied, keeps me out of mischief and gives me a little bit of sanity in my sewing sanctuary while all the crazy stuff is going on out there right so sewing basket now um i've mocked this pattern up um so i'm going to give you the dimensions for it so you can mock it up at home um it's just my piece of paper Yeah, you know, i couldn't do a download or anything for it because i used two, a, a3 sheets so what i'm going to do is i'm going to tell you the measurements of it so that then you can create it again at home using perhaps um, some sheets of A4. Um, so the top edge, I'm gonna write on my pattern so I don't forget, but it'll be backwards for you. Uh, so the top edge of the pattern piece is 24 inches. Yeah, we do all need a bit of me time, don't we? I think it's very important. Um, so that's 24 inches and then from top to bottom, so not on the curve, but the, the straight bottom edge, is 14 and a half inches okay so that's 24 14 and a half so then what i've done is i've cut out that in a rectangle you can't really see because there you go cut that on a rectangle and then to make the corners i've just used a dinner plate <laughs> and i've drawn around the dinner plate um, and that's made my corners but what I did is I folded it in half, put the dinner plate on and then did one and then cut them both so they're exactly the same. 
okay so that's your main pattern piece okay so what you're going to need is you're going to need two in lining fabric two in outer fabric and two in foam now i say foam because it gives it that nice structure to hold in your shopping you could use wadding and interfacing but you'd probably want some sort of cardboard bottom um, so that, that, that keeps it nice and secure. So that's what you need. And then you need handles. Now for the handles, you'll need foam again. Just bring in my pieces, I've pre-cut them. So these are three in, lots of threads everywhere. These are three inches wide and I haven't quite decided. I look posh, say thanks, Linda. I haven't quite decided on the length yet. So at the minute, these straps are coming in at 23, 24, 25. They're 29 inches, but whether or not I keep them that size, I don't know. Um, we'll see as we go along. So you need that in foam, but what you need to do is cut your fabric, so your outer fabric for the straps, that's gonna be seven inches. So how are we gonna make the straps? It needs to be seven inches and the same length, whatever we decide that to be. You also need a gusset piece. Oh, I'm dropping everything. You need a gusset piece. I haven't made that yet, so I'm gonna make that with you. What I've done, now you have to excuse my thread because my machine was breaking as I was trying to stitch this together. This is a good hack if you haven't got enough foam for the gusset, because it's quite, it's gonna be quite long. Oh, this thread's is you can join two bits together just by butting them up and then doing a zigzag and then you can make a really long piece. All right, so we'll get to the gusset when we get to it. So I'm just gonna clear some space so I can get started. I've actually cleared my table today so I can spread everything out so we're not getting at all confused. So the first thing we're gonna do is put everything to the side is we're gonna create the gusset piece, okay? Um, foam by the meter, can only find small packs of it. I've got it on my website. Not that I, I tend to try not talk about business on here, but I do have it on my website by the meter. And it's cheaper than most places you'll find. Right, so my gusset piece, so that's the piece that's gonna run from top corner all the way around to top corner, which is essentially gonna be the width of how I'm gonna get my shopping in there. Uh, love the summery and cheery fabric. Yeah, I've gone for canvas for the outside, and then I've gone for a poly cotton on the inside, so that my layers aren't too thick. Um, you don't want a canvas and then a canvas inside. Your machine will not like it, especially with that foam. So canvas, foam, poly cotton seems to be a good combination. Um, right, so for gusset, we're gonna measure this now. I wish I'd bought my uh, tape measure out with me. Let me get some. Uh, get some elastic. So what you can do, if you haven't got a tape measure, but you want to measure something, get a bit of string or elastic, as I'm going to be using. Elastic will not go to waste. And then all I'm going to do is place my elastic on one corner then I'm going to follow that all the way around the outside edge of my piece. Butting that right up against the edge. I know you can't see, I haven't moved the camera down yet. And this is going to give me the length and I can measure it after I've cut the piece to size. Or just put a mark on it if you don't want to cut anything. Right, nearly there. Just be careful if you're using elastic like me not to stretch it. <laughs> right, so I'm just gonna chop that to size. I've just gone a slight bit bigger. So your gusset piece we can now measure is going to be 23, 33, 43, 46 inches in length, okay? Um, watching you on your tablet and your mum on the TV. <laughs> I told her off this morning. I said, mum, you're on the same time as me, not cool. <laughs> um, yeah, so your gusset piece is going to be, what did we say, 63? 66? What did I say? <laughs> oh no. 
23. You'll keep me right, I'm sure you'll tell me. 33. Oh, 43. 46. Right, I'll write that down. Gusset. 46. So that's long. So wide, um, we've got, I, I'm going to do 10 inches wide, I think, if I've got enough foam for that. Might have to be a little bit shorter. Uh, I'm going to do nine and a half inch gusset. <laughs> oh dear me, nine and a half inches. Right, so I'm going to cut this to size. I'm hoping that I've got enough. Let's have a look. Do, 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 23. Twenty-three, thirty-three, forty-three. Might have to add on another little bit. So let's get a bit. Um, this bit will do. A good trick to butt for butting up your foam is if you lay. I'll show you. What you can do is. You want each side to be the same so that you can butt them together. So if you place one on top of the other. And then just use, you don't want to waste too much, but just use your rotary cutter and follow the line. Just trim that bit off there. It doesn't matter if that's a straight line because you've done both. It's going to butt neatly in. Do you see that butts together? And then I'll just zigzag it together. And then we'll have a full length. So I'll just bring in my machine. This is quite good, quite good foam actually. Right, I'm just going to zigzag this down. My foot pedal's upside down. Oh, there we go. There we go. Right, here we go. I'll just make my stitch a little bit. It's warm in here this morning. Okay. Just get my. I missed a couple of stitches, missed a couple of bits where I've joined it, but I'm not bothered about that. Right, so I'm just going to turn my needle back to straight um, oops it's Susan sorry this text I don't know what that means <laughs> yes tiger print I know it's a bit uh, it's a bit fancy isn't it so I'm going to cut this what did I say nine and a half inches so I'll just use my ruler I do wish I had my big ruler with me but I haven't that's gone somewhere. So nine and a half inches for the gusset. I'll just line this all along. That hasn't cut through any layers. And nine and a half. Just make sure that's neat at the, at the side here. So is it lovely and sunny where you are as well? Because it's lovely and sunny here. I hope it is. And I hope you've got an outside area you can enjoy the sunshine in. It's all a bit much, isn't it, when it's lovely outside? Right, so here we go. So now I'm just going to measure this. So 23... Is there 33, 43, 46. Perfect. I'll just straighten this edge up. Nice. And just straighten the other edge up. Okay. Right, so now what we need to do is, we can do this quicker now we've got the measurement. 
We're going to get some of the canvas. Oops. So I've got this blue and yellow. That's lovely, isn't it? Blue and yellow canvas. And I'm going to cut a gusset piece out of this. So that is this going to be long enough? It should be 40, probably be 44, but let's have a little measure and see. 23, 33, yeah, I'll have to do it the other way. So, 23, 46 is here. So if I just, I'm gonna just roughly cut this piece off. cut it along here as well. Like so. Then I'm going to trim this to nine and a half. Put my end nice and straight. to nine and a half. Okay, so there's our gusset piece. Huge, huge. And then we want the lining as well. So I think that this one, I don't think that's going to be quite long enough either. No, so we'll do it this way again. People don't like ripping fabric, but um, sometimes needs must. <laughs> needs must when you're on a time scale. I know you've all got things to do, places to go. <laughs> if only we had places to go, eh? If only. Right, how are we all getting on? Sun in breezy in Shrewsbury, sun coming out in Pontypool. Brilliant. That's what we like, isn't it? I've actually got my second load of washing on because I'm determined to get some out on the line. Get some out. Love the smell of washing when it's been on the line. And I had a Tesco click and collect order this morning. That was a breeze. Just pulled in and the chap bought the shopping out. I did feel sorry for everyone queuing up though I have to say it's not fun is it not fun at all right cut this one tonight. I would have liked to have done this before but because I was having so much problems with my machine I didn't get a chance right okay so we've got all our gusset pieces now we've got foam lining and outer so we're going to put all the lining together first so what we're going to do is get our two lining pieces from the outer of the um sorry the sides of the bag and you can use your pins you can use your quilting clips to attach that gusset i'll just use a couple of pins to start with so what we're going to do is taking one of them we're going to do right sides together so this is your lining piece and then going from one corner, whichever corner that you want to do, you're going to place right sides together so it comes into the bag, okay? And then you're going to just pin that into place. And if for any reason you've cut a longer gusset, it's fine. It's actually better if you cut more than less and then it will come right up, right up to the corner. So we're going to stitch this all the way around the outside actually this is far too big I don't know what I did with my measurement there but uh, rather a bit big than less as I just said and then we're going to repeat that on the other side but we're going to leave a gap on the other one for turning 
so that we can turn our whole bag. Now you're gonna need quite a big gap because you're gonna have all that foam. So um, we'll do that on the other side. So make sure you've got right sides together. Bring that in up to the corner. And um, I've just unthreaded my machine, of course. And um, what was I going to say? You can do, um, I'd probably do a little bit of a bigger seam allowance. I'd probably go for half an inch. Um, and then you can always trim it down. Um, but it just means everything's gonna be caught. But whatever you do for the lining, make sure you do that for the outer. Okay. So let's stitch that all the way around. Oh, I've still got a zigzag. Okay. When you get to the corners, you're just simply going to manipulate it round. So I'll show you what I mean by that. So I'm getting to a slight bend now. I'm just lining up my fabric and then I'm going to be just turning this fabric as I go. So keeping the edges together. And you can stop and lay down your fabric. And again, like so. Keeping those seams together. And then get to the straight. And you can carry on down. Gosh, it is ever so warm in here this morning. I haven't even got my heater on. Coming up to the next corner, or the curve, I should say. House of Alistair machine. I don't know if he still does them. I haven't seen them for a while. Yeah, I've got far too much gusset there. Goodness knows what I was measuring when I measured that. <laughs> right, so I'm just going to cut off some of the excess, but I'm going to make sure I actually leave a bit extra. Right, so now we're gonna do, so you've got one side now attached. Just make sure my threads have gathered up a bit. I think because this machine has just been sat still for some time, it's not, uh, the tension's not quite right, but I can't be fiddling about with that now. So I'll just give it a little, yes, you see it's all bunching a bit. So frustrating, isn't it, when what you're used to using just doesn't work. Just, you think, ah, oh, great. You sort of fly by the seat of your pants a bit with something else. So I'm just going to ruffle that down there, that's a bit better. Right, so now we're going to attach the other side. Uh, we're going to leave a good size gap for turning. I'm going to leave a good eight inches, good eight to nine inches for turning, okay? So just placing it down again. We're going to now place the other side to the gusset, right sides together. So you've got gusset flat down, and then you're gonna join those together, starting at the corner. And this is the corner that I haven't got the excess fabric on. This is the corner that we started with on the other side. So bring that in again. And make sure you're doing the same seam allowance as you did on the other side. Take that pin out. And 
and stitch them together. I'm just gonna adjust my tension a bit. Let's see if that helps. Not really. All in all, I'm not having the best day sewing machine wise, am I? tension's gone all over the place but we persevere at least you'll be able to see how we're putting it together even if I do have to remake it so I can actually use it for the shots right so I'm coming up I'm on the straight now so I'll just do a couple of inches give it a back stitch and then move it along keep it all lined up Keep it all flat and we do that on the straight we don't want to do that on the curve and then you can carry on stitching from there just snip that okay Turn the curve again. keep manipulating that fabric around Right. Oh, I've run out of bobbin. I tell you what, today is not my day. It really isn't. I hope you're all having better days than I am. I've just changed my bobbin. Dear me. Sounds so lovely though, doesn't it? Um, okay, that'll do. Right, let us start again. day today I think I'm gonna to have to get the other machine apart try and sort that out because that's the machine I I do like to stitch with and it sort of throws you a bit out of kilter doesn't it this one's great for um you know churning through the layers but the tension's not quite right today and uh, that's annoying me rightio Let's get back on track. Let's get that bobbin up. Perfect. Okay. I think it must be sort of like a dip process to cover these machines. Like, have you ever seen when they do car alloys? It's sort of like a dip. I think they must do that with these, you know. Because you can see slightly where it's been stretched in places, but I don't mind that. I quite like it. Right, let's get this edge done. Da -da -da. Better. That's better. Now I'm going to just lay this flat and I'm just going to trim off the gusset piece. That extra bit. So you've got your gap for turning there. Yeah? 
square water machine. It's a House of Alistair Taylor Eastman. Um, and it's pretty super, pretty super. Right, so we've done our lining. What we're gonna do is we're gonna repeat that for the outside fabric. So this is the canvas. So with this, we're gonna put the wad uh, the wadding, the foam on. So if we use a stick and spray or the June Taylor, I've got my pieces ready. So I'll just spray my foam. So, and pop that on. It should just about fit right. If not, I can trim off any bits that aren't quite right. So that's that one done. And we'll just do the other one. Like that. Do with a press, really. Okay, just make sure that's down. And then we'll repeat that for the gusset piece, which as we know is too long. So I'll use, I'll go on the side where I've got less joins. So I'll just put some spray down. Running out of spray. Place that down. Lovely. Okay. So we're just going to repeat that now with the outer fabric with the foam. So you're going to have to take your time with this. It's going to uh, be quite a few layers. I need to make sure this is the right way up. Yesterday we didn't catch the foam in the seams because when we turned that uh, around we wanted to make... Um... <laughs> it somehow managed to turn on the subtitles and it's hilarious every time you say foam. <laughs> um, yes but we want to catch that foam today so um, We've got it all in the seams and it's all very secure. So starting at the top edge, you want to pin all those layers together. Okay. So make sure that's all nicely together. And I would really, really, truly recommend quilting clips at this point. Um, so actually I'm going to start the other side because it's going to be easier for my machine. So I'm starting on my right just line that up so it fits. Okay, I, I, I genuinely haven't used this machine for about 18 months, so I am hoping it goes through these layers. <laughs> I know that my other machine definitely would, um, but it's just annoying that I haven't got that working. So let's line them up. Probably needs a longer stitch length, to be honest. And you don't need to leave a gap in turning for this one because this is your outside fabric. Keep those layers in. It seems to be okay. Right. If for any reason your foam starts to curl up, you can just lift your foot up and reposition it. Starting on the curve now. I actually think this machine works better um, in all these layers than it does the, the thinner layers together. The stitch um, is not bunching like it did on the thinner layers. It's almost like it's saying, come on, give me more to deal with. Right, so just Going around this corner still. Ooh. Didn't like that sound very much. 
keeping everything as flat as you can do and as lined up. Keep turning, keep everything flat. edge through the bottom edge of the bag again this is a good reason why you want to use your quilting clips does depend a lot of the um if you look online it will say every after eight every eight hours of stitching but you know you stitch so much that uh, eight hours of stitching for me would be i'd be changing my needle needle especially when i'm making up samples and things i'd be changing my needle literally every day so, you know, just, I don't, oh, it really does depend. It really does depend, especially with what you're stitching, what sort of fabric. For instance, I've got a, a denim needle in here at the moment, but on my, that's only because that's all I've got to hand. A normal needle would be absolutely fine on my other machine. Obviously, there's a lot of manoeuvring going on because it's foam and it's lots of layers. I'm just making sure everything's lined up. You probably can't see anything with that wad of foam there, can you? But uh, needs must, needs must. Okay. Coming up to the top. Okay. Right. Gosh, it's getting even warmer in here now. Right, let's take that pin out. Just make sure I've caught all my seam, which it just about looks like I have. So this is what we've got. So you've got the gusset piece and you've got a side piece, okay? And then we're gonna attach the other side piece. So getting those. Um, any more? Click on the cog wheel, you can, oh, well done. Helping each other out, fantastic. Yeah, see, I wouldn't have a clue about. Right, I'm just gonna use my stick and spray again to get that gusset down. I'm just running out of this. It would have uh, secured a lot better if I wasn't running out of it. I'm just making sure that's all in place. You want to um, do some tacking stitches to keep your foam and your fabric together then by all means do that just excuse me I know you can't see this I'm just adhering that fabric down but the only way I can do it is if it's facing me <laughs> and you can't see I'm not even sure if anything's coming out of the can I have got more in the house but uh, I'm not gonna go and get that Right, so I'm just flattening that fabric down, pulling it out, making sure it's all on there. Right. Okie dokie. 
So now we're going to do that with the other side again. We don't need to put a, um, a gap in this one. We just do that for the lining. So you're going to end up with quite a lot of um, stuff to manipulate about. So make sure you've cleared your table. <laughs> okay. Line up those two corners and bring it in. And then, you know me, I like to put my needle down and then just get those layers together. Okay. Carrying on around the outside. to this corner, keeping everything together. So here's a question. I went and got the, um, the shopping this morning, click and collect. Am I then allowed my half an hour walk or have I been out and that's what I'm allowed? What do you think? I would have thought I'd still be allowed to go out for my walk. But let me know what you think. Let's see. Can never have enough bags. <laughs> Lynn, I'm going to have words with your husband. <laughs> He seems like a bit of a troublemaker. Anyway, you could tell him you're going to make this in masculine colours and then he can do the shopping. So. A man bag. Oh, I've got a really, I've got something to confess to you actually about bags. Um, Oh, I'll tell you, I'll tell you after I've put this side together. It's quite bad, um, but I think that if you were in my situation, you'd have done the same. Um, but we'll see when I tell you. <laughs> I'll finish this and then I'll tell you. You might think less of me afterwards. <laughs> Right, just coming up to this curve. Okay, last bit. And then we'll move on to the handles. There we are. Oh, I'm so used to hooking my thread that way. Okay, so now we've got the whole um, out a bit. So I'll move you up and I'll tell you my confession as well. Um, yeah, if you haven't got your, got, yeah. Oh, okay. your walk is outside, she said. Oh, yeah. You can go for a walk. Brilliant. Then I will. Um, right, so I'm just going to trim off the excess of this side and then I'm going to confess to you my sins. It's a very quick story, I promise, and then I'll get back to the stitching. I'm just wrestling with this to cut it straight. Right. So few months back I had a show and so I'd taken lots of samples to Hachanda, lots of bags, okay, shopping bags, tote bags, all sorts of different bags. 
On the way home, I said to my family, I'll stop at Asda and pick up some bits and pieces. So I pulled into the car park, went into Asda, went to the self-scan, went to get a bag. I know I had lots in my boot. Went to get a bag, there wasn't any. So I thought that's okay, because I've got lots in my boot. What I'll do is I'll put it all back in the basket, take it to my boot, put it in my bags, return the basket. Fine. So as I'm scanning, there's a lady there and she's sort of just looking around. She scanned all the shopping, but she's looking around. And I said to her, are you okay? She said, there's no bags. Yeah, I know. She goes, but I walked up here and I live a mile away. I was like, oh no, that's terrible. I thought, oh no, that is that is bad. Well, I walked off to my car thinking, oh no, that, that is bad. And then I thought, oh blimey, I've got loads of bags in my boot. Loads of bags. I'll go, I'll take her a bag from my boot. She can walk home. And then <laughs> I looked at all the bags in my boot and I thought, oh, they're all my fabric bags. They're all bags I've made. Not, oh, I don't know this lady. <laughs> And then, oh, this is bad. Then, at the bottom of the boot, Sebastian's wellies were in a plastic carrier bag. So I thought, ah! So I tipped out his wellies, shook out the bits of mud, tried to wipe it down as best I can. I ran into the shop and gave her the bag. So oh, I've got your bag. Oh, and she was so grateful for the bag. But then I felt so guilty that I hadn't upgraded her to a better bag. Oh, dear me. Do you think less of me now? I did still give her a bag. It was just a Sainsbury's bag. <laughs> That's bad, isn't it? That's bad. Right, so we've got this now. This is what we've got. We're, gonna, we're not going to turn it round yet because we're going to move on to the straps. Um, I'm just going to trim this one to size. I'm going to just pop that on the floor. I did sweep this morning, so it's sort of tidy in here. I'm just going to make sure my lining is straight. That is straight. I don't know why I was about to cut that there. That is straight. And that is now straight. Ish. Uh, yes, yeah, so that's what I did. I'm um, sorry about that. Confession time. Um, <laughs> Libby, only came for the stories. Can't sew to save my life. Hi, Libs. How are you? Hope you're all right and keeping safe. Um, you wouldn't give her. Oh, see. Oh, right. Thought you might think less of me. <laughs> right, I'm going to turn my iron on and we're going to make the straps. So... Um, obviously, if you're going to use this for going about the shop and putting it in food like it's a basket, you want quite thick straps. And that just means that that weight is, that you're holding is spread across um, a seam. So that's why we've got, we're going we're gonna to end up with three inch straps. So that's quite a decent size. So I'll just bring in my pressing mat. And then I'll poke you downwards. Uh... <laughs> Angela, <laughs> I'd say, um, can I have my Sainsbury's bag back, please? No, I wouldn't say that. That's, that's 5p I'm not seeing again. <laughs> uh, right, so, strap. I'm just going to trim off this selvage and this selvage. Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to fold over. Let me just measure this so I know that I've got this right. We're going to encapsulate the foam inside the strap. All right, and what we're going to do is we're going to fold over by half an inch. And then we're going to bring that into the centre. And we're going to do the same on the other side. So it's not quite long enough, is it? Maybe by quarter, did I say quarter of an inch? Because I didn't fold over quarter of an inch. Yeah, we're going to fold over quarter of an inch. We're going to then bring that into the centre. And then we're going to stitch that down the centre. Now, that gives this strap a really good structure. 
and it also makes it a bit more secure. You could do a zigzag stitch, but whatever you do, remember it's gonna go on the other side. So I'm just gonna do a straight stitch. But what I'm gonna do first of all, is I'm just gonna use my iron to give me that quarter of an inch on either side. I always get a runny nose when I come in here. Yes, so the story behind this bag, if you saw my post last night, is because I went to Asda and I thought about, I was about to pick up a basket and they do have the um, anti-back, you know, and all the tissues and that there. I've gone very wavy on that line. But I didn't really want, to, I didn't really want to even touch the anti-back. Um, and I, so I thought, oh, well, I'll um, use my big shopping bag. I've got um, one of those ones that's like a, a pound 50 or something from, I think it was from the pound shop. And so I was walking around, I was putting all my shopping directly in it. And then of course I worried that they might think I was just filling up my bag and gonna walk out, which obviously I wasn't gonna do, but it's that conscious thing, isn't it? You just feel guilty even if you don't do anything wrong. Um, so I took it to the scan and then when I emptied everything out to put it then back in, I scrumpled up the bag and made a bit of a scene <laughs> about the fact that I was scrumpling this bag up because I obviously wasn't going to steal anything. Honestly, the things we do. Um, you're good. Uh, really love to do some memory bears. Oh yeah, memory bears. I can't read the rest of what you said, but I'll... Uh, Come back to it. Right, so I'm gonna fold that over now. And if you want to give that a press, do. It will probably, you know, a little bit of friction keeps it flat. Now, obviously I've cut my fabric strips a bit longer because I didn't know how long I wanted the straps, but I think I am happy with the length that I gave you at the beginning. Right, so now bring it over the other side I'm going to take off a quarter of an inch of this foam. It's just not quite sitting. So you would just do a little bit wider on the fabric rather than trim off your foam. So let's place that in again. And don't worry about your raw edges because you're going to keep, you're going to um, stitch those between your outer fabric and your lining oh, it's got very dark outside now um so pin just pin that into place and you do want to make sure it where you're going to stitch is as central as possible because remember that's going to be seen on the other side because you're going to go through all those layers so i've just stitched i've just pinned that bit and um, you could go for a really fancy stitch you could go for uh, a, a metallic thread, perhaps, um, up to you. I'm just gonna go for a straightforward stitch. So again, don't worry about those. What am I caught on? I'm caught on something. Don't worry about the um, raw edges. I've got a bobbin issue, there we are, there we are, there we are. Because you're gonna trap those, so that's fine. Okay, so make sure everything's lined up and then stitch. Just take out my pin. My foot pedal has wandered off, there we are. you can and I'm just going all the way to the end of this bit of foam I've got a bit off here Sort of 
tucking it in. That's what it feels like, making a bed. So now I'm going to just trim off the excess fabric, which is about there. And then I'm going to give this a good press. So now you can see, it depends. I'm probably going to have that on the outside, the, the fold, because I do quite like that. It looks quite, quite neat. But you are going to want to give this a good press to get out any of the... You know, you might have pulled it slightly like I have, but by giving it a good pressure, you're just going to get everything lined back up. Like so. Lovely, lovely strong handles. If you want to, you could, um, as I said, zigzag um, along there. So that's where you folded and then on the other side, it. It looks like that, and that's going to be really comfy on your shoulder. Uh, two handles, um, and they are 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29 inches long. All right, so we'll do the other one. I'm just trimming off another bit of this foam so that it fits on the other one. Just trimming off quarter of an inch. If that actually, a slither, <clears throat> and then trim off. And I'll cut this piece aside so I don't have to fold over too much with my iron. Yeah, it's gone really dark. So we're gonna repeat that again. So both sides, quarter of an inch, fold it over and press it. Like so. Yeah, two handles, one either side. I think that um, that will give it a nice bit of um, rigidity. And also it means that you can you can carry it in one hand, let it flop open, then pop your bits and pieces in um, and then hold the two pieces together as you walk home or walk to the car. So, quarter of an inch. It's probably the waviest quarter of an inch press you've ever seen. But we're all friends here. <laughs> Yes, so um, I managed to get the kids some joggers on the Asda website and um, I got them a pack of five t-shirts each from Amazon because um, actually Jaden is growing at a rate of knots and none of his t-shirts fit him and also because obviously we're not going anywhere I think just joggers, basic joggers and t-shirt is the way forward isn't it? I did the same with David actually, got him some joggers and hoodies. Right, just pressing this so I've got some sort of guide as I go down the strap. Okay, minding the mat. machine again and then stitching that as we did before but you want to make sure you've only got a quarter inch fold yeah so you want to make sure that you're going as close to that fold as you can so that you're trapping everything in Oh, 
have a wiggle and manipulate it down. on this strap that's okay it's just for me uh, that machine is fabulous it's um a house of alistair taylor eastman machine um that's okay lynn or just but um any spare bits you've got together And also, if you want to just make them so they're hand handles and they're not going to go over your shoulder or anything like that, they, they can be shorter. <laughs> this strap's gone ever so wonky. Oh, well. Oh, well. Right. What I'm now going to do is make sure each end, that fabric is level with that foam. Okay. So it's just foam and fabric at the end, completely butted up together. Because when we put this between the layers, we want to make sure we've caught both. And I'll do the same on the other strap. So I've got a little bit of excess fabric here. This one's okay, but you know I'm right with my threads. Right, so now we're going to put it all together. Um, I'm picking to it again. <laughs> oh, nah. I haven't got time for that. I, I think you'll know by now that I'm no perfectionist. Right, so I'm going to bring you up because I've got a lot to show you now. Well, a lot, not a lot, but, you know, a big thing, a big amount. So we've got our main body. We didn't turn. We've got our lining and we've got two straps. What we're going to do is we're going to turn the lining so it's right side out. And I would say give your seams a press of your lining now. Otherwise it's going to be a little bit tricky. I'm not going to bother. So what you're going to do is place that inside the bag. So what you've got is the lining and the outer right sides together. And then you're going to join up your corners. Yeah, and you're gonna pin them. So we're doing that before we've even put the straps in. So they're butting right up together. I'll show you. So you're pinning your lining in. I've got to get some more pins. In fact, I found some pins this morning. Bear with, they're down here. Bear with, bear with. In the words of uh, Miranda, bear with. Yes, look at that. Da, 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 da. <laughs> More pins. So that means I can just line this up really nicely. So lining up there. And then your gusset. What I do is I line up my seams first. And then I'll line up the straight because as long as those seams are lined up, you're fine. Okay. And that's sitting in nicely now. Line up my other seam. Keep everything nice and flat. Make sure that's straight. I've got to do it this way. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I would fit in that gorgeous bag. Yeah, it's massive. Um, but if you're anything like me, you go down for your supplies and um, you want to make sure they all fit. Right. Lining up this edge here. One. Two. It's not the most exciting thing, is it, watching me pin, but... Uh, 
after I've pinned this, we're going to pop the handles in. But I like to pin it first so that everything is as it should be. Right, handles. So, you want to make sure that your rough edges are going to stick in between the lining and the outer. So what you do is just, I'll just remove that pin and I'll just remove that pin. Now it's up to you where you place your handles, but if you have them too close to the centre, that centre is going to take a lot of weight. You want to have them fairly um, spaced apart. So I'd go for a good eight or nine inches. And what you do is you place your, okay, I need to move this so you can see. Hold the two top edges, so pull it straight and then bring the two top edges into you, okay? And then poke it between the outer and the lining layers. And then you're gonna pin it into place that way. If you do that, then it means the strap's gonna be straight when you turn it right side round. So pop it down in between the layers Pin one in. I'm just going to loosely pin this in because it, it ends up with a lot of uh, things to hold. One and then the other. Now, whatever you do on this side, you need to repeat on the other side. So if you pin and then attach this one roughly. This one, this side doesn't need to be hugely accurate, but as long as you do the other side the same. So what I'll do is I'll show you, I'll turn it down like this. So what I do is I'll take this front piece, I'll lay it over here, I'll take a pen, and wherever my strap is on the other side, I'll just place two marks And then I know exactly where I'm going to put that. Uh, yes, they're wallpaper scissors. They're quite superb. <laughs> they're, they're wallpaper scissors. I just got them in one of those cheap packs, you know, that's got the tray and the, um, the roller paintbrush. Right, so uh, making sure I'm doing it the same way. Pulling it straight, taking my two ends up. And then poking it between the layers. I don't actually want it that way around. Poke it between the layers. If you need to remove pins to get that in, then do. So take that pin out. Butt it up against the edge. Sorry, I know I've just put a pin in my mouth. I didn't have any free hands. <laughs> And lining this one up. And just making sure they're going straight down. So that edge is flush. Right, you've got a fair amount of layers here. So you might want to change to a walking foot. Um, I haven't got that luxury with this machine. Um, yeah, it'd be a great uh, crafting bag. So now all you're going to do is stitch all the way around the outside. When you get to the handles... You want to go over that stitching two or three times to make it really secure. Um, you could do a zigzag over the top as well. Once you've finished that seam, you could zigzag it. You could um, use your overlocker if you've got one. So, whether or not this... I was scratching my nose then. I know you saw that. I was scratching. Uh, whether or not this machine will do this, I do not know. My other one... I wouldn't have any issue, I wouldn't have any problems, but uh, I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see. So um, I do like to start from, from a corner here so that I can get everything, you know, exactly where I want it to be. So you might not see me for a while. I'm going in the bag. <laughs> I'm going in the bag. Um, I'm gonna do half an inch seam allowance. So I really am trapping everything. So if for any reason you've got a little dip of foam or anything like that, you're going to trap everything. Also with this, because you've got foam and your, your, your foam, your lining and your outer all the same height, 
when you turn this right side round, you're going to get a slight lip of lining over the top you'll see when I've done and it does look like you've bound it which I personally enjoy if you don't enjoy that you can trim your foam by half an inch and then just stitch the fabric that'll also be good if you don't have a walking foot or you're not sure if your machine will handle all the layers trim your foam down um, you could secure it into place with a running stitch all the way around the outside but just trim that down then you're only stitching the outer and the lining again up to you uh, but you'll still need your handles at the top. So I'm just going to go slow and steady. And take out my pins as I go. So sorry if you can't see me at some points. But I am going to take this to the shops. So um, I do want to make sure I've got it right. I'm gonna go down the shops with my bag so I don't have to use any of the baskets. Now, if you do do a good half an inch, you can trim back then afterwards to quarter an inch. Um, you don't have to have half an inch and then turn. You can trim everything back, but it just means that you're trapping everything. Right, I'm coming to my first strap. I'm just gonna take my pin out and hope that I don't move it. So now that's loads of layers now i'm just going slowly i'm now going to go back over that so i've gone over it one way and i'm just going back and then i'm going forward again okay so i really trapped that in lovely i'm pleased with that Okay, so I'm coming up to the next strap. Take my pin out. And this one I haven't put in quite straight. It's a bit of an angle, so I'll adjust it. Go over it. And then just slightly come off it by about two centimeters and then do your back stitch. seam roll it round now I have no idea what the time is I'm presuming we've been over an hour um, this is taking quite a long time but I don't mind <laughs> I've got my shopping in so I'm happy Another pin. Again, next strap, it's not quite flush to the top. Give it a little twist. Stitch. Stitch. That's all that's on me. I have, I'm not showing you my stitching, am I? Well, you, you get what I'm doing. Oh, I've run out of bobbin. You can now see all my facial expressions when I, um, how far did I get with bobbin? Oh, we're okay. How far did I get here? Okay, phew, I'm just gonna sort my bobbin out. <laughs> um, yeah, so all my facial expressions of when I stitch. It's mainly like this, frown. Right, just sort my bobbin out. God, I'm getting really warm. I can't open the door because you'll hear all sorts of uh, goings on out there. I'm gonna hang my washing out after this. I'm very excited about it. I don't have enough pegs. But I'm just gonna sort of loop it over. It's not too windy. Okay, that will do for this. Okay. 
when I was threading this this morning, where's my scissors gone? It was like dealing with an alien species. I couldn't, you know, you get so used to something. I couldn't figure out for the life of me how to thread it. I was like, get a grip. Come on, it's not, can't be difficult. You've done it before. <laughs> got a really nice um, pesto pasta for lunch and I got spaghetti um, on my shopping so that was an absolute bonus is that in looks like it's in okay there we are right where did we get to oh we got to over a strap Keep my layers straight. Um, yeah, it's a bit annoying, isn't it, when the bobbin runs out? But, you know, such is life. Such is life. Worst bit is it's so much now I've got a manhandle in. There we go. <laughs> okay. Oh. Oh, it's not liking that. Hold on. That's me not putting my bobbin in properly, I don't think. I'll just do that again. Um, so, what else can I tell you? I think it might be pub quiz night tonight. I think we're going to go for a theme. We went for 90s last time, which didn't go down, which didn't go down very well. What's happening here? Take it out. Yes, it didn't go down very well. So, we're going to go for a different theme. We'll see how that goes. Uh, washing is drying very quickly. Hurry up before we lose the sun. I know. It's coming. I've got to sort this machine out. And just so you know, it's me and not the machine. It's just because I haven't used it for a while. Okay, here we go. There we are. There we go. Right. Come on. You've got to just talk to it nicely. Come on then. Come along. There we go. Right, we'll see how that works. Ay, ay, ay. Okay. We'll see. Think, cross your fingers. Hope for the best. Okay. We seem to have uh, succeeded there. Right, I'm actually on the last straight. Is it stitching? Yes, it is. Just over this last strap, over and then back. And then take that pin out. I'm gonna hit the, I'm gonna hit the camera if I don't move this. <coughs> And, ooh, I didn't like that sound very much. And then we're back to where we started and I'll just do a little back stitch, hitting the camera. So taking out that pin. Now, you can now trim back, trim back the foam. Uh, you don't have to do this. I, I'll just, you know, I'll just show you what I'm, what I'm talking about. So on this edge here. You know, you can trim back any foam. Oh, I shan't bother now. I'll do it afterwards. I'll keep my lining. So now I'm going to put my hand in the lining. I'm going to take the bottom of the gusset and pull it through. Um, obviously, these threads are annoying me and I'll trim them off afterwards. Can't be doing with that. So just pull it through. That's annoying. Go away. Um, I would pull it through by the bag and not the handle because you're going to be yanking on it. So just go from the gusset and pull it round. And of course, then this is washable. So you do a shop and you can pop it in the machine. Turn it round, fight with it, fight with it. Push it all in. Push it all in. Right, so now we've got this. 
that we're just going to now put a hand in the lining, flatten the gusset of the main bag. Then we can, you can then stitch up your lining. So just pull it taut and then you can just hand stitch that or top stitch it, whatever you like. Yeah, you can scale it up or down. It's entirely up to you. Uh, let me just trim off these threads. Don't like them. Don't like them. Don't like that. Okay. So you then uh, give it a good press. Um, and do you see what I'm talking about, the lining? Because of the foam, you can just see a bit of that. It's not perfect because I haven't pressed it. But you've got two super padded handles. You've got a bag. Needs a press to get it quite right. You've got a bag that's got a really nice gusset there so that you can fill all your bits in and you can just go about your business. So it's got a really nice thick bottom. I do need to press it. I hate showing you things when they're not quite done. <laughs> um, and of course, what you can do is you can stitch this down your lining you can stitch it down um, just make sure if you're going to do that and you're going to top stitch have your handles facing up and then top stitch okay and then that will keep everything in place all right so that's the bag so it sits on my shoulder or it can just be a hand carry bag for going around the shops putting everything in you can see it's absolutely huge um, and you've got a huge amount of space at the bottom for all your bits and pieces. So upscale it, downscale it, whatever you want to do. Uh, this is going to be really useful for me now, so I don't have to go and use a basket. Oh, goodness me. I'm going to take it inside. I'm going to give it a really good steam. Uh, because it's so massive, it definitely needs a good steam. Uh, before I do that, I'll just turn off my iron. Never leave here without turning the iron off. Do it first. Yeah, so I'm going to go and steam it and then I'll take a picture of it so you can see. And I'll probably top, I, will I top stitch it? No, probably not. Right, thank you all for joining me. I'm sure that we've been absolutely ages, but you've st stuck with me. Um, so thank you very much for that. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I'm going to log off now. Uh, it should be pub quiz tonight. I'll post uh, just after I've had my lunch to confirm and we'll see what the theme's going to be. Uh, thank you all so much. Um, gotta love a thick bottom, absolutely. <laughs> um, you like the yellow? Yeah, I like the yellow at the top. It gives it a nice nice trim, doesn't it? Uh, right, thanks everyone for watching. Signing off now, and I'll see you tomorrow, same time, 11 o'clock. Bye!